Back in 2015, the Bonanno family was in total disarray. They had an ever-changing panel and a street boss, John Palazzolo, running the family. But that all changed in March of that same year. The Bonanos, in desperate need of structure, voted in Joe Camerano as their acting boss. If anyone's been paying attention, I always speak very highly of Joe C. For one, he warrants it. And in all my dealings with him, he was nothing short of an absolute gentleman. His father, who everyone called Joe Saunders, was once the underboss of that family. So as they say in the street, he comes from good stock. Sometime in October 2015, I met a troublesome banana captain, Pete Lavaglio. I was standing out in the parking lot where Big John had a cigar lounge and believe I was talking to Joey Amato when Pete walked over and Joey officially introduced us. At the time, Pete was introduced as a banana captain. A short time later, on November 1st, 2015, Lavaglio was in a restaurant, Takayama, which was right across the street from the cigar lounge on Page Avenue in Staten Island. Apparently, there had been an earlier incident, a fight that took place, and one of the restaurant's owners, Fred Forte, intervened and broke it up. Not long after, Lavaglio walked over to him and smashed him in the face with a glass of water, causing him blindness in one eye. Many viewers have asked what gets a guy shelved. And although there are many reasons, one would be if your name is involved in incident after incident. For example, besides the Takayama incident, there was another one that took place in October 2015 inside the Mexican restaurant next door to the cigar lounge. That incident carried out into the cigar lounge as well. A friend of Big John's named Neil DeVito had walked into Cabo. At the bar drinking was Lavaglio, fellow banana member Al Armeta, and a few other guys. Lavaglio called DeVito a rat. Prior to this incident, DeVito had a run-in with Joey Amato in the Columbos. But on this particular day, the Bananos attacked DeVito inside Cabo, but he was able to run out of there. As he later would tell the FBI, I would have been beaten to death. Where he ran to was the cigar lounge, and the Bananos chased after him and continued to attack him inside the cigar lounge. Big John had spoken to me about the incident. You know, little Neil, I told him I didn't, but he insisted that I knew him. He said that fucking Pete and the Bananos chased him into my store and was beating the shit out of him. I jumped in the middle, but at one point, Pete grabbed my arm. I told him, Mo, now you're going to put your hands on me? I was shocked that the incident even took place. And Big John told me that he was going to put a beef in over the incident, meaning that he would bring it to our administration, who would then bring it to the Banano administration. Don't forget, there was already bad blood with the Bananos. Years prior to this incident, they stormed our club up in the Bronx. In 2016, Josie called Lavaglio to a meeting at his house on Long Island, and it was there that he personally wanted to let him know that he was being shelved. Unbeknownst to Josie, Lavaglio, besides getting himself into multiple problems, had become a confidential informant for both the NYPD and the FBI. Their conversation was being recorded by Lavaglio. When everything transpired, everything worked out the way it worked out with this Johnny P. I could have went through the whole thing and reconstructed the entire family. That's my right to do that. I wanted you to have a captain position long term. I know you've been running Russia through every fucking body. The amount of feedback that was coming back with you every single week. It's your responsibility as a captain to put all this stuff on record with people. The Johnny P he's speaking about is John Palazzolo. And what he means by everything transpired was when he stepped in as acting boss. As the acting boss, Joe C. could have broke captains, including Lavaglio, and replaced them with new people. But he didn't do that. He was trying to let Lavaglio know that he kept him in the position and that Lavaglio disappointed him. He then gave him the perfect example of the way to get yourself shelved. By what he describes as feedback is the beefs and complaints made against Lavaglio. Like, for example, the one Big John made. It's obvious that Lavaglia was not going to his administration and putting these incidents on record. And when you don't do that, you open your administration up to get him blindsided, which is naturally something they wouldn't appreciate. He continued, the issue is how everybody's going to look in the end, because you got to know something, Pete, and you got to understand. We've been in a fucking gutter for the last 12 to 18 years. I can't counteract what Tommy DeFiore did. I can't counteract what Johnny P did. I just got to show everybody that I'm everything that they're not. And I've done that. You got to understand this. To have a position in this thing, you can't be emotional. By in the gutter, Josie is referring to the Bananas losing their commission seat.
Tommy DeFiori was the acting boss in 2013. And Joe correctly patted himself on the back for having what it took to put the bananas back on track. And he made LaViglia understand that he let his emotions get the best of him. As a boss, which a captain is, you have to step back and analyze situations before acting on them. He continued, I was looking for the most senior guys to fill the most senior billets because that's how the younger guys are going to learn the right way and stay in some form of order here. I got to be honest with you, Pete. This Johnny Pete does not go away and he gets another four to six months run. It's done. Everybody just walks away. Laviglio responded, I think it could have gotten violent. And Josie answers him, well, listen, it had the potential for that. Josie is basically expressing his disappointment in Lavaglia. When he mentions teaching the younger guys how to act, he's letting Lavaglia know that his actions as a captain wasn't teaching the younger guys the right way. When John Palazzolo was their acting boss, and he was originally a Bronx-based captain, one close to Mikey knows, there were a lot of guys in that family dissatisfied with him as their boss. But that all changed when he got violated in 2015 for meeting with Banano members in violation of federal probation. As a result of that, Joe C. was voted in to lead the family. I'd like to not mention the super thanks icon found underneath this video. Put there, just in case anyone would like to show appreciation for these type of videos they could find on this podcast. And by doing so, you'll continue to receive such videos. Thank you. I decided to cover this because it not only shows the mindset of Joe C. as he was running the Bonanno family, which wasn't an easy task considering the family was in shambles at the time he took over. In addition, it's a perfect example of why a guy gets put on a shelf. In this case, it was a captain. Joe C. could have easily knocked him down from his position and called it a day, but instead he made the decision to shelf him. Besides from the destructive behavior Lavaglio displayed, for Joe C. there was a bigger picture, and it had to do with what he told Lavaglio about the younger guys in the family. Simply put, if Lavaglio wasn't going to teach them the right way to act, then Joe C. would by sending the strong message that this is what will happen if you don't toe the line. <laughs>